future of the enterprise, and that, that is something which is really important topic because the enterprise is how individual endeavor is brought to create value. So what I want to do is talk a little bit about uh, the history, and perhaps uh, use my own story about what I've uh, experienced and learned along the way around uh, about what the enterprise is, and, and pose a few questions about what's coming forward in the, the future of the enterprise. Now, to begin, we all gathered around a campfire, and we together worked out uh, what did, uh, where the hunting would be good, whether we should relocate to a new place the next day uh, to uh, rally around to be able to chase the mammoth. And this was the, the beginning of organizations, of organized uh, endeavors. Uh, after that, we started to get some larger organizations, creating some, some quite phenomenal uh, structures. And no doubt there was uh, some management and middle management and uh, project planning and so on, being able to bring together many people to create uh, you know, massive structures, both here in, uh, in the Americas as well as in uh, Africa. Uh, we had the guilds, which uh, were a way in which, you know, I suppose, part of the distributed endeavors, where people cross people, uh, banded together to be able to set some parameters for what they did and to be able to create uh, something worthwhile, create value for themselves, for the community, and moving uh, beyond that. And uh, you know, then we had a really momentous occasion, which was the creation of the corporation, and showing the stocks from the Dutch East India Company, which was one of those first large endeavors. And it's really uh, instructive to look at the difference between corporation and the enterprise. Corporation comes from the Latin corpus. There's a body, it has a legal entity of its own right. It's, uh, it doesn't relate at all to the individuals. The individuals can come and go, and then the uh, corporation itself continues to exist as a body, and in a way like a person. Whereas enterprise comes from the French uh, on, to, to undertake. So this is about undertaking things to be able to create worthwhile endeavors. And this could be within the corporation, or it could be distributed far beyond that. And I think that's, in fact, a real significant difference, is today we are moving beyond the corporation, the body, the enterprise, which is far more distributed, in individuals being able to create something which is really worthwhile. Now, that's still my own uh, story, is uh, uh, to illustrate some of the things which I have thought about in creating that. I'm, I was born in Canberra, Australia, but uh, very soon, uh, left at age three, and my father got a job in the United Nations. I spent uh, the, almost all of my formative years in uh, Geneva. And where I, what I saw there was my father working for what was, you know, what I thought of at the time as the largest bureaucracy in the world. Now, the United Nations absolutely achieves very worthwhile things, but it is absolutely an extraordinary bureaucracy with many parameters and processes and uh, things which, uh, you know, cordon off ideas and structures, and you have to limit as much as it enables. And I, I certainly at the time thought, well, no, I don't think I want to work in a bureaucracy of that scope. I want to explore you know, the potential of a uh, slightly more embedded world. I, my first job was with uh, NCR, and that was an instructive time in how technology is applied in organizations, where we're shifting from the mainframe, a centralized access with a lot of screens with green characters distributed around the organization where people access this centralized computing resource. They were shifting then to the mini computer, which enabled offices and locations and departments to do what they wanted to do. And at that time, as well as the shift to the PC, where finally the individual was being given the technology to be able to uh, do things, to be able to think creatively, to be able to uh, do things uh, which started to have that shift from this centralized information access and control being flowing through down to the individual control of their information, which we've obviously seen a lot more of, of uh, uh, since then. I then was thinking, well, the uh, you know, money is uh, a lot of what makes the world go around. And I said, I, I want to understand you know, how the world works and the world of finance is a, is a large part of that. And I joined Merrill Lynch in uh, international equity sales, and it was uh, many instructive things, certainly about how organizations are funded and managed. It was also very interesting to see that whilst this was a very large global organization, every individual was working for themselves. There was no loyalty, their only loyalty was money. There's many people saying, I want to retire early, which uh, none of them, you know, not a few of them actually uh, did. But uh, there was this real shift, I suppose, uh, you know, this real emphasis on 
I'm the individual, I happen to be employed by somebody, but I'm out for my own interest. Now, having had enough of that, deciding that wasn't my world, I, I moved to Tokyo. And in Japan, there is a very different dynamic, where the individual is subsumed to not just the enterprise, to society at large. And there's this really quite, you know, a, 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 perhaps the opposite polarity in terms of this uh, role of the individual versus the organization. Now, while I was uh, in Japan, I joined Thompson Financial, and uh, was uh, Tokyo Bureau Chief, and then moved to London to uh, the Global Director of uh, Capital Markets. And it was interesting with our role there, because what we were doing was essentially, we were information brokers. We were part of that ecosystem of the flow of information between uh, people who are you know, issuing with a large bonds or uh, equity issues. And from that, we were exchanging value, exchanging information, being part of that flow of information between organizations, which was actually uh, creating value. Now, having decided that there's uh, enough of uh, employment and uh, wanted to do my own thing, I traveled for a while and uh, I built on my studies of neurolinguistic programming. And NLP for me is it's a way of how do we understand human cognition, how we process information, that using our senses to be able to process things and to you know, act effectively as a result. So when I started working, I, I came you know, working for myself and building my own business. I came across this field of knowledge management. I thought, well, you know, this is fantastic, but where's the client? You know, it seemed to be very internal focus. And all of my work had been about across boundaries, moving organizations across boundaries. So I wrote my first book, Developing Knowledge-Based Client Relationships, which is a bit of a mouthful, which is really saying that knowledge and relationships are everything. Now, this is not a a new idea, and in, you know, in fact, um, you know, some people before it simply said this, that knowledge and relationships are the only things that matter in the economy today. So how these come together in terms of the knowledge of humans and the relationships between people and between organizations is, is really the fundamental of this emerging connected world. So shortly after that, a couple of years after that, I wrote my, my next book, uh, Living Networks. And this was really saying that the networks that connect us, that connect technology, that connect organizations, are literally coming to life. The people on the planet are as the neurons in the brain. And so we are all part of a higher order consciousness, and we are literally part of something which is alive, which is growing beyond us. So those networks on many levels are the link which you know, we are really participating in and creating. This, this, the analogy of the global brain being very real. So from that, you know, I, th I think that there's you know, instructive to look at this uh, quotation from, from Kevin Kelly, which says, the organization is a set of relationships that have persisted over time. Now the link between me and between the relationships, the network is a set of relationships. And that is the way in which we must understand our world. It is a network world, and each of those networks is a you know, relationship, sometimes a very deep relationship. If those relationships persist over time, that is essentially an organization. It is people aggregating to create value, whether that's within a corporate structure or something which is beyond that. So, you know, I've done a, you know, a lot over the last years of looking at this organizational network analysis to actually uncover the communication and collaboration patterns within organizations to be able to understand that. Because an organization is not its organizational chart, 